Kung hindi mo ko kayang ituring bilang isang ina, respetuhin mo na lang ako bilang isang tao. This, to me, is almost the perfect Filipino movie. When people say to me now, which movie from the Philippines should I watch? Which movie will help me to understand Filipinos? I will say Anak. Hello, my name is Dominic. I am a British comic book writer and international script writer. I have worked in Hong Kong, in Russia, in China. Now I am based here in the Philippines. Today, we are watching A Knack from the year 2000. Starring Vilma Santos and Claudine Barreto, this film was directed by Rory Quintos and written by great friend of the channel, Artito Ricky Lee and Raymond Lee. Ano ang kwento ng pelikulang Anak? Mm. So the story of Anak is about a woman who works in Hong Kong as a domestic helper. And when she comes back to the Philippines after a long time away, she finds that everything has changed. Her family has changed. Nothing is the same as when she left. And the question is, will things ever go back to normal? Ano ang masasabi mo sa pagkakasulat ng mga karakter at sa pag-arte sa pelikulang ito? Vilma Santos is amazing in this film. That's it. That's that's all there is to say about her performance. She gives a completely fantastic, believable, relatable performance. She's brilliant. Claudine Barreto is also very good. The way her character is written, to begin with, I wasn't sure that it was working for me. The lonely, angry teenager got to a point where it felt a little caricature. It almost didn't work. But as the movie builds, the characters develop, the story grows, it's the writing just gets better and better and better, and Claudine Barreto seems to grow into that role. That character is a very interesting one, because it seems like a very simple character. She loved her mother, her mother left, she's now just full of anger and resentment. But there are some really beautiful nuances in the way that that character is written and the way that it is performed. The show that it's not just a rebellious daughter. She feels like a real human being. Her suffering feels real. The loss of her father feels like something that has really touched her. And that goes to show the talent of an actress who was before mostly doing teen movies, doing teen romances, teen comedies, has grown into a really phenomenal actress. And the relationship between her and Vilma Santos is fantastically written. From the moment the two characters first meet, we are waiting for the scene where Vilma Santos's character will say, enough, I have had enough of this, treat me with respect. And we are waiting for that, the whole movie. And as those scenes of conflict start to come later on, it shows how well the movie and the writing has built the foundation of these characters so that they can grow, their relationship can grow. And the actresses do a fantastic role in that performance. Her two friends, who were also domestic helpers in Hong Kong, who come back to the Philippines around the same time, give wonderful, wonderful performances, as if we see that it's not just Vilma Santos's family who are struggling with her absence. All of the families that we see are lacking something because these women are not in their lives. And when they do come back, it's not a simple case of reintegrating. It's very, very difficult. But both of these characters give fun performances. We get to see them laugh. We get to see them cry. We get real empathy and real growth from all of these characters that is tragic. We see the three of them together in Hong Kong, and we see the three of them back in Manila, and the only times they really seem happy is when they're together. And what we're hoping for, what we really are hoping for with those characters, is that they will find a way to be happy, not just together in their safety net of each other, which is what they were in Hong Kong, but when they come back to Manila, we want them to find happiness with the people that they love and none of them can do it. They're only happy when the three of them are together. And those three actresses 
all work really well together. We feel the depth and the length of their friendship, which goes to show how well written those characters are and how well acted those performances are. Ano ang mga most memorable moments para sa iyo sa pelikula ito? Anak is filled with fantastic scenes and fantastic moments. But some of the scenes that stand out the most to me are the karaoke scene and then the smoking scene in the bedroom with the mother and the daughter. Now, those two scenes are important for very different reasons, but the karaoke scene is so vital because it lets us see that although Vilma Santos has returned to her family, she really misses being with her friends in Hong Kong. And rather than devoting her time helping her son with his homework or spending more time with her small daughter who she's only really just met and got to know. She takes all the family out to go and do karaoke with her friends. And it's interesting because it shows us that although she has done a selfless thing by going to work overseas, she is still a little bit selfish. She's still doing the things that she wants to do, and that is not a bad character decision. That is a great character decision. That is what makes the character three-dimensional rather than just two dimensions. She's not just a good mother, a selfless mother. She's a good mother, she did things selflessly, but she has her own wants, her own needs, things she needs to do for herself. And the end of the karaoke scene where she sings that song, the same song that the father sang to the daughter, it creates that perfect moment, the loss, the loss of time with her family, the loss of time with her husband. Those are things that are all shown to us in just the performance of a song. It's fantastic. The smoking scene later on is kind of the opposite because that is the first moment where the mother and daughter have a chance to see one another through their own eyes. When they exchange cigarettes, when Vilma Santos says, can I have a cigarette? And they smoke together. It shows that they're not so different. The daughter has decided that she can never relate to her mother, but the simple act of smoking a cigarette together shows that actually they have more in common than they thought, and that then allows a slight change in their relationship, that even though they argue, they know that they will be able to find common ground moving forward. And that's what the cigarette comes to be as a visual cue, that the simple exchange of a cigarette is really all you need. At ano naman ang mga pinaka-memorable na mga linya at dialogue sa pelikulang ito para sa iyo? The most obvious one is is the classic line that people react to when they think of a knack, and it is that definition of a mother. That scene in which she is having to decide again whether she will stay in the Philippines or whether she will return to Hong Kong, and they have that conversation about why is it that when a father goes out and earns money and leaves, he is a good father, but what is the definition of a good mother? What more can a mother do? It shows the introspection that our character has had since she returned to the Philippines. Obviously, these are things that she has been dealing with since she was in Hong Kong, but that discussion shows everything that she has been processing since she came back. Her idea was she could return with a suitcase of pasalubong, distribute that to the family, and everybody would be happy. But that scene goes to show that no matter what she does, no matter what she came back with, if she had been a father, it could have been different. Gifts could have been enough. But as a mother, she will always wish that she could do more. And that scene stands out. It's easy to see why that is one of the more quoted lines from Filipino movies. Ang pelikulang ito ay isinomite sa 73rd Academy Awards yeah. para sa Best Foreign Language Film. Ngunit hindi ito nakabilang sa mga nominees. Ano kaya ang mga naging pagkukulang ng pelikulang ito? I think it's probably because Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon won that year, that it was so good that Anak didn't manage to get the nomination. But I do think it's kind of criminal that Anak wasn't nominated. I think of all of the films that we have seen, 
this really should have been. In terms of what it's lacking, it may be that perhaps it's not show-offy enough. The directing isn't doing anything phenomenal, groundbreaking, while in Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon people are having floating bamboo sword fights. In a knack, it's more grounded, realistic conversations. But from having watched the movie myself, I think it might be down to the subtitling. And that might seem like a strange thing to bring up, but having lived in the Philippines a bit now, my Tagalog isn't great, but my Tagalog is good enough to know while I'm watching the film that the things the actors are saying is not what the subtitles are telling me. And that's a big problem, because Ricky Lee, the great Ricky Lee, and Raymond Lee, who he's written it with, have chosen each line with great precision. That might seem like a very small change, but actually, when those things build up and build up on each other, the relatability of the film starts to go away, because the subtitles aren't telling us what the characters are really thinking and feeling. The subtitles aren't giving us the depth of the screenplay. And when you change that, the specifics of the character, of the story, of the culture go away, and there aren't as many bamboo sword fights as Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I think that's probably what it comes down to. I think this is a great example of an adaptation and what an adaptation should do. It references the song at the beginning and the end of the movie, but what a knack does so perfectly is to capture the spiritual essence of the song. It's not trying to adapt it lyric by lyric. The screenplay is not trying to build an entire film around the words of the song, but it captures what it means. And adaptations can tend to fit into two different camps. You can have direct adaptations with something like Lord of the Rings, where they have taken the book and basically they have just got a camera and filmed the book. Or you can have something more like a knack, which is an adaptation, but that is looser, that's trying to capture something true about the original art. The success of that adaptation then is how closely it manages to get that spiritual truth. And I think in that regard, a knack is incredibly successful. Even if the song wasn't included in the movie at all, even if it had a different name, we would still be able to look at the two side by side and see the spiritual connection between the two. But again, it is not trying to hide its adaptation either. It's not trying to hide its roots. The movie poster for a knack says a knack the movie, which goes to show that it is not trying to distance itself from the song, but instead trying to say that it shares the same experience as the song. And that is probably why both the song and the movie are still so resonant to Filipino people today. They are both classic because they still speak to something that is true in Filipino society, that is true within the relationships between parents and children, what parents are willing to do and what children feel they have to do to define themselves as they grow up. Thank you for watching this episode of Filmopinos. Please like, subscribe, and we will see you for the next movie.